Did you know you can build a full featured real time video app just like this in minutes? All of this runs on Cloudflare's real time kits now in open beta. In this video, I'll show you what real time kits is, how it works, and how you can use it to build your own real time video application without touching any of the WebRTC complexity. If you've ever tried building real time video or audio from scratch, you know it's not fun. You probably started with a simple idea, say for example, let's add a video chat feature into your application and suddenly you're knee deep in WebRTC setup. WebRTC, for those that are not familiar, is an open standard that lets browsers and devices share audio, video and data directly between each other without sending everything through a central server. Now this sounds simple enough. But in practice, it's not that simple. You are juggling signaling, NAT traversal with stone and turn servers and managing connections between multiple peers. The diagram on the screen shows how traffic passes through turn and stone layers and an SFU for scaling plus extra parts for media like transcription, recording, chats, all these things you have to build and maintain yourself. Now add browser quirks, permissions and scaling challenges, and you are maintaining a full communication stack instead of building your products. Now that's where real time kits comes in. Real time kits is a collection of web and mobile SDKs that provides a developer friendly abstraction layer over web RTC. It handles all the low level complexities from media permissions and NAT traversal to connection management so that you can focus on building your application's features. And it includes two parts. First, the core SDK. This is what handles the sessions, the media and signaling. And then you have also the UI kits. This comes with pre-built components like the video grids and mic controls that you can use within your application. With real-time kits, you can start from a ready-to-use setup with some of the templates that we have available, or you can go bare bones for full control. Either way, the infrastructure, scaling, and web RTC complexities are already handled for you. Now let's jump into a demo. I built a virtual classroom app I called Lenly, and here's how it works. It's an application that lets you create a virtual classroom where you can host classes, study groups, or one-on-ones, and it has two core features. You are able to create a new meeting or you can join an existing meeting with the meeting ID if you have one. So to create a new meeting, you give your meeting a name. Let's call this real time 101. And this is the name of the meeting. You can also add your name. So whoever is joining, you add your name. I'm going to add my name in there. And then we have this advanced tab, which shows a list of presets that you can select depending on the kind of call and the role you want to assign to the user during the call. So for example, we have group call guests, group call hosts, and group call participants. If we're doing a live stream, we have the same. And if we're doing a webinar, we have the same. So these are roles you want to assign to users joining the call simply because they have different privileges. As a host, you can, for example, um, start a recording or you can um, add people or remove people from the call, or mute people. As a participant, you have limited privileges as compared to a host. Whenever I create a new meeting, I always want my the person creating the meeting to be the host. So I'm going to set that and then start this meeting. When you start the meeting, you see an initial page where you can select, for example, your audio device, your where you, the camera that you're using, and also the um, where the volume of the call is coming from, so the mic and the video. We also have this effects tab here where you can, for example, blow your background if you want to, or 
add a virtual background if that's what you want before then joining the call. And then when you join the call, you see similar features that you are familiar with already with applications like this one. For example, you can share a screen, you can turn on your mic, turn off your mic. We also have this cool troubleshooting panel for just making sure that everything works well before you actually share or start the meeting. And we also have the effects tab here as well. On this side, we have the chats tab, the pools, if you're going to be running pools for your classroom, you can see here all the participants and those requesting to join and the plugins. The plugins is actually a very useful feature in this um, scenario. So we are hosting classes and we want to share documents. We can use DocShare. We want to illustrate. We can use Escalidro plugin or we want to use a whiteboard. We can use that as well. So this is my demo in a nutshell. Now let's look at the code. So my application is composed of two parts, the back end and the front end. The back end is wired up with a Cloudflare worker that has three endpoints. One is meetings, tokens, and presets. So these are what is calling the real time kit API in my worker. I decided to use the worker, but you can also do this directly from the dashboard or you can use the API using coil, but I feel like this is more intuitive and I can programmatically do it directly from the UI without um, doing any API calls because I have that wired up, right? So for my meetings endpoints, I have a few parameters that I need in order for this to work, which is the account ID, the application ID, that I have created because for every new real time kit application, you need to create an app and you need the app ID and then my CF API token. And after I have all of those, I send a request to the API so that whenever I click create meeting in the UI, this is what triggers and a meeting is then created. Next, we have what issues the token. So for every participant that joins a meeting, they need to have a token assigned to the user. And how do you do this? You can use the um, slash meetings, slash meeting ID, participants. This API endpoint is what you use to create a token. And the way that I've wired up my application is whenever a user tries to join a meeting or tries to create a meeting, a token is automatically created for their user and when they need to join the meeting, they still need to use the token every single time they join because this is what verifies the user before they join the meeting. And what I need, what are the credentials that is needed? So we need the name, we need the presets um, that the user or the role that the user is assigned to. So whether they are the host or whether they are the participant and then the, their user ID. And then the last endpoint is called list presets. And I, like I showed you in the UI, I have a drop down list of all the presets where you can select. So I'm, I'm calling the API endpoints to list out all the presets that I have in my real time kit app and then show it in the UI so that the user can select one before creating a meeting. So that's it for the back end. For the front end, I have two main components um, pages that I created. First is the home. This is what you see when you first um, open up the application. And this is where I'm calling all the different endpoints. This is where I'm loading the presets. This is where I am using the API meetings. And this is where I'm also using the tokens. The core part of the application on the front end is in the meeting.css file. And here is where I am using the real time kit UI um, kit to actually build out this application because I'm not doing everything by myself. And for this, I have installed two libraries the Cloudflare real time kit React UI library and the actual real time kits react library as well, because I need it to set up my application. And here I'm calling this component real time kits and passing my meeting and also the custom configurations that I have added, like the blow background that I showed earlier. 
Like I said, for every meeting or for every participant joining a meeting, the user joining, whether they are the host or whether they are the participant, they need to have a token. And that's one of the things that I check for before joining the meeting, right? And here I have written out a custom toggle control bar that shows you the, the options to blow your background or the options to add a virtual background. Here I've passed in different parameters like the blur strength. This goes from zero to hundred, so you can always update it. And I'm also passing the images that you see in the, in the tab for changing your background, right? So that's pretty much it. You can always customize this however you want to fit your UI. You can even go as far as changing the theme on the real time kit GitHub repo, which I'll link in this video. We have different templates set up for you so if you don't want to use the defaults which i am currently using here you can always use one of those ones or you can customize it to fit your brand or to fit your own needs now real-time kits gives you real-time analytics as well for latency to see jitter packet loss and session health and this is accessible via the dashboard or through the analytics api here on my dashboard for my app, which I called Virtual Classroom, I can see the usage for the last 30 days. I've used 46 minutes in total. I've had over 14 sessions. I haven't recorded anything or transcribed anything, but you can see all of this here. Also on the dashboard, like I mentioned, you can create your meetings. Here you see all the meetings that I've created. You can see the session. So for every session, right now we have an ongoing session, which is the call that I joined and it's live. We see that it's live. If the call was recorded, I would see the recording after the call here that I can then go ahead and download. And then we also see a list of presets like I showed you. So everything you see through the dashboard, you can also do with an API, right? So real-time kits can power different use cases from virtual learning, like you've seen in my demo, to voice AI and real-time agents, interactive games and robotics, webinar and live shopping. Real-time kit is perfect if you're looking for something with speed and something that's ready to use. But in case you're looking for more customizable at a low level, we also have infra primitives for SFU and Tone, which is part of the same real-time suits that we offer at Cloudflare. So that's real-time kits. It's your toolkit for building real-time video and voice applications on Cloudflare. It's fast, developer-friendly, and globally distributed. It's now in open beta, so that means you can try it out today. Feel free to check out the description where I'll be linking the docs as well as the sample demo that I showed in this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.